Howdy. And you guys are completely honoured to be listening to me right now because I'm recording this on a Friday night, which is kind of bad enough anyway, the fact that I've literally nothing to do tonight. Um, but also because Coronation, well, the first part of Coronation Street has just finished and I'm recording this before the second part starts and I'm really looking forward to it because David's just fallen over and he's had a fit. Uh, or should I say it's fitting. Um, he'd probably be doing that for half an hour, but we don't know what's going to happen yet. Anyway. So, welcome to the podcast. Uh, this is something new that I'm going to be doing. Um, I, I don't know when. It probably won't be a weekly thing because I probably find that I won't have enough to talk about. Or they'll give me a couple of drinks and I soon find what to talk about. And, um, yeah, that's kind of that's kind of where I'm at. So, the reason I wanted to do these uh, podcasts is because... The whole of the kind of Life with Bev blog, what I want to be doing with it now is taking it so it's just kind of what I do. But there's two problems with that. First off, there isn't a lot that I actually go and do. Um, So when I do, you know it's good. But also the other thing is I actually don't have a decent camera to actually video things um, like me being out there. Pardon me. Um... Yeah, so when I do go and do these, like, days out and that sort of thing, where it would make ideal videos and that sort of thing, I can't at the moment because I just, well, I, I just generally don't have the camera. So, yeah, there there are quite a few problems. But, I mean, the other thing is, as well, is that over the past couple of months, um, I've been kind of going off the Life with Bev thing and the, the whole Bev rants thing, and I've actually been doing the videos that you might well have seen on this channel, the Bev and Ian videos. I've got to say... As far as actually making videos on YouTube goes, those are the most fun videos to actually make. I don't even know what it is. I mean, to give you a little bit of background, me and Ian have actually known kind of about each other for... I can't even tell you how many years, but it's been a long time that we've known about each other. And we've never really had a chance to actually, you know, like form a friendship sort of thing. Because it's always been... I mean, like, we got introduced through friends of ours. Um... And we got talking and that sort of thing. And that was really good. And, you know, there'd be the occasional time where we'd meet up or we'd see each other. Like, we'd we'd say hello to each other, but there was nothing really kind of there sort of thing. And then, um, and then, like, the past... I don't know how long it's been now, but the past couple of months, I think it has been. And me and Ian have actually gotten to kind of form a really good friendship. And for some reason, we're kind of on the same wavelength when it comes to, like, humour and just saying these outrageous things and that sort of stuff so um we were talking one time and ian said i want to be in one of your videos you know like the life with bev thing and i was like well yeah okay and then that just didn't happen a couple of months later and ian said well why don't we make our own videos so we we made the first video which was the uh, makeup tutorial where we had the face masks on and that actually went really really well and i think on the f- i think on the first night we actually shot two videos but only one of them actually made it onto the internet and i deleted the other one because as you probably well have noticed with the first video uh, the microphone is ridiculously quiet um and of course the uh, camera as well doesn't actually keep up because there was a problem with the software that we were recording on blah 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 so i think it was the week after or something like that and we actually uh, filmed another video or i think it might have been a couple of videos that week i can't remember but basically we built up these kind of videos and you know we stuck doing them and it, it's actually been really really good fun and um up to now hearing really positive things back about it as well so there you go um it's good to see that even though we don't have like you know thousands of views per video that the people who are watching it are actually enjoying it that's a really good kind of compliment in its way i'd rather have like a small amount of people watching it that actually enjoy it rather than a massive crowd and loads of dislikes so i'm just, i'm just glad that it's going well as far as uh, up, up and coming videos that me and Ian have got, we recorded some uh, last night, I believe. No, it wasn't last night. It was Wednesday night. And uh, we recorded uh, six videos in one night. Um, well, technically we recorded two videos and then one of them got split up into five. Um <clears throat> and that again was the most hilarious thing because um, well, I, I, I'm not going to say too much about it at the moment because it's kind of you know 
with our videos at the moment, we are up to the end of June. So, like, the next video that we record and that gets put up, that's going to be for the beginning of July. So, we're kind of a bit ahead with our videos at the moment. So, it gives us just time to have a couple of weeks off and just have a laugh with each other, I guess. So, one of my favourite videos is coming out in two weeks' time. Please remember that, two weeks' time. Next week... Uh, on the Wednesday, we've got the uh, workout video coming up. Yes, that's right. You heard it here first. Me and Ian did a workout video. It was so much fun as well. It was really good. So we did the workout video. And then on the same night, like literally just after doing that, uh, we went down to Asda and we got a load of snacks in and everything like that. And then we came back here and we did to date, basically, what is... I think, in my in my opinion, it's probably the funniest video that we've done. Um, it it also required the most amount of work that we've ever had to do in a video as well. Um, but we, we had the awards show because I worked it out, and that is our tenth video. <coughs> so we thought, well, we'll just do you know, kind of like a piss take sort of thing. Um, so we have got the awards show, and then we've also got the behind the scenes of the awards show. Um, and again, it was just an absolutely hilarious thing to do. You know, we had uh, voiceover work to do. We had different camera angles to film. And, you know, all the lighting was different. And it was, honest to God, it was the most funniest thing. And I think I think Ian left mine at something like half one in the morning. And I'd kind of only just got about halfway through the editing of the first part of the uh, awards show. And then I think I was up till about three in the morning and then threw that on YouTube and then just did the second video which was kind of less editing to do like there wasn't as many components to it but it was still kind of a bit of work um, and like I said they have actually become my favourite uh, videos that we've done at the moment I absolutely loved them so yeah so the awards show was a lot of good fun and like I said that's in two weeks time so please 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 look out for that one it is so hilarious I just absolutely love it the next thing uh, that is on my list to talk about this time is uh, ask questions as well. I, like I said before, I'm going to try and do this more often. Um, you know, like I said, I, I, I want to keep the Life with Bev videos for when I'm actually out doing stuff. You know, I don't want it to be my opinions because that isn't my life. That's my opinion as it is at the moment. You know, I've got the whole Bev Ranch channel for that. So... As far as videos go, yeah, that's what I'm keeping the, the Life with Beth thing just for. But I also don't want this blog to kind of like die on its ass and there be absolutely nothing happening. So that's why I'm doing this vlog. So I can still kind of input into the blog, but it's not an actual video kind of deal. I don't know. It's weird. So, yeah, so I'm throwing this open. So if you want to ask me any questions at all, then feel free to ask away. And that does, uh, I, I will leave my contact details below. If you go onto Twitter, it's at SignBevLive. Or uh, if you go on Facebook, it's facebook.com forward slash Viva La Bev. But I will put them in the um, video description bit below. So please go and have a look and then get some questions in. And they can be the most random questions. But please just get some questions in. That does also lead me on to my next thing. Um, probably later on tonight, I'm actually going to be filming a video. Um, which is going to be called The Truth About Being Gay. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. It's going to be on the Bev Ranch channel, and the reason that it, it's um, it's called that is because I did a video a couple of months back. <laughs> In fact, maybe it's even probably coming up to a year. Um, but basically, the, the video that I did was called The Truth About Job Seekers Allowance um, in the UK, or UK, whatever it was. But uh, I did the video, and it was, it was just basically me kind of breaking everything down and saying, this is my situation, I'm on Job Seekers, and blah, blah, blah. You know, it's going into it kind of thing. And that proved to be really popular. I think that people responded well to actually kind of listening to a personal experience from actually being in that situation. And I know that talking about being gay isn't going to be a brand new thing to YouTube. But it's kind of putting my point out there, you know. I'm a single gay guy. I'm in the UK. And, you know, I've been following these laws uh, that have been... Well, especially the ones that have been changing recently. Um, to just an unbelievable amount. So, I, I, I do really want to put... Um, my uh, point of view across on that sort of thing. So that's something that I'm going to be filming. But hopefully, you know, that, that video is going to be aimed at actually, um, well, I hate to say it, but it's going to be aimed at homophobic people because I want them to kind of 
understand stuff and I also want it to be interactive as well so those people instead of just posting a hateful comment would actually be able to go well okay he's putting his point out there I will ask this whatever so you know there may well be follow-up videos to that with me answering uh, genuine questions as and when they come in or you know whatever the deal is um, but I think it is about time for me to do an openly honest video about that because I think especially on the Bev Live channel, on the Bev Ranch channel, sorry, uh, I haven't actually spoken about that much and you know that is something which is um, certainly a big part of my life because I do a lot of um, like a kind of campaigning so to speak and you know I have a lot of friends that kind of rely on me as their source of information you know so when the laws over here a couple of months ago started to get changed to do with the gay marriage th the night that that vote actually took place my facebook chat was just i'm surprised it didn't crash i was inundated with these people and they're going well what does this vote mean what does this why are they voting on this well who's done this and blah blah blah, blah. and it was really really interesting and it's something that i really really do enjoy um kind of like researching and knowing about this sort of stuff but um i haven't actually done it in a video form yet so that's something i'm going to be doing of course the other thing that goes with that as well is that you know like i said before it's not a brand new thing for a gay person to be opening their life up onto youtube and explaining you know their point of view on things to do with the gay community and whatever you know i have seen a couple of videos of that that sort of stuff myself there is certainly more than enough gay collab channels out there for people to be putting their points across but this is just this is kind of me doing it you know one of the main uh, youtubers that i follow uh, josh reimer he lives over in canada i can't even tell you for how long canada's had gay marriage you know there hasn't been this kind of you know this humongous vote taking place and people campaigning and all this sort of stuff you know and it's not to say he's got it easy because for, by the christ he he hasn't got it easy but um you know he's got his point of view he's in that part of the world another channel that i watch of course you guys will know is the depth fox channel but you know that they're a well they are a gay family so that's a completely different point of view um and again they're in a different part of the world as well you know so it's it's just kind of me catching up with them i guess so it's just putting my point across <coughs> um so i hope that it goes well the video will be up quite soon like i said i'm going to try and get that film tonight probably and um and we will just see how that goes. Speaking of me, though, being um, the person who watches the news, of course, one of the main things that I've been watching in the news recently, which I kind of felt, you know, I, I probably should mention this, is about the buildings over in, like, uh, where's the most recent one? The, the, uh, was it Bangladesh? Um, and, of course, they had the building that was unsafe but they sent the workers in and now the death toll is confirmed at being like over a thousand people dead um <clears throat> there was one i think it was either last night or the night before and it was a building fire and these people couldn't get out the building um i think it was something like was it two people that jumped out the building one of them died straight away one of them died later on because of the injuries suffered you know we live in this day and age where not a lot of people think about safety and um what it what what it means and basically how to be safe um <clears throat> and that is why i've been really safe with what i do you know some of you guys will know that i do the um the kind of entertainment gigs sort of thing like weddings and birthday parties and that sort of thing and i've been the only mobile dj to actually mention this up to now but i've been the one out there to say we need to do this but do it safe because you know not only have i got to think you know i've got a room full of like whatever 100 people or something like that but they're drinking alcohol you know these are not going to be if this building goes on fire these are not going to be the most sensible people to try and evacuate out of a building um so ages ago uh, or, or under the uh, mbd blogs i did the fire safety video in fact that was the first one that we actually did and i showed a video in it which i i just think they need to make a program about that video alone um I will try if I remember if I remember I will put the video uh, the link to the video into the video description bit of this video how many times can I say video and um yeah and basically it's a video of a man who is he's gone to a concert it's it's a band that have been kind of out of town for a little bit they've come back this is like their homecoming gig they are really popular the like it's a sold out gig they go into this room and everything like that 
they when they start doing their song they have pyrotechnics on the stage which is just if you're asking me you are asking for trouble with pyrotechnics but uh, the pyrotechnics goes off and uh, it's, it's like a curtain or something behind the stage catches light and you, you can see the fire starting and literally within about five minutes you've got fire exits that are crammed with people you know these people have tripped up more people have piled on top of them uh, people putting windows through just th this whole thing and you know if you look into the case there was, there was loads of people that died on that night and it was you know it's a horrific thing and yes okay it's kind of rare for that thing to happen but this is why it is so important especially with mobile DJs but it's so important for us to get the health and safety message out there straight away you know well, I mean if you guys have listened to the um, live uh, gig recordings that I've done on Ustream then you will have probably heard at some point uh, probably to do probably at the beginning of it but you'll you will have heard the safety message that I, I play at the start of every gig and it just says listen if there's a stage area and there is equipment set up don't let your kids near it because some of the equipment is really hot they could burn themselves it's on tripods it can fall over um there is loose wiring and just just keep them away um there is one saying and this sounds really really basic but some people are so stupid like this but if the building is on fire if the fire alarm is going off don't go back in the building just to get your handbag or something like that you know it's it's basic stuff but these are you know people just do what they want in these situations and it's kind of got it to get to a point where it's like no you can't but especially with the ones that we've seen in India recently you know like a building isn't structurally sound you shouldn't be sending people into that building you know it should have had these uh, structure experts going in who could have said okay this building isn't safe this is what you need to do to make it safe even if they say knock it down and rebuild it or you know something like that that's what should have happened but because it didn't well you've now got over a thousand people dead because of whoever it was because of what their actions were or what, whatever their advice was again with this building that went on fire the other night you know i mean okay there wasn't loads of people in there was a couple of managers or something like that there was a meeting or i, I don't really get what was happening inside the building but if you look at that building if that if that if part of that building goes on fire how where is your exit you know you look at the outside of the building there are no fire doors on that like tower part of the building you know it's it's just pathetic you are asking for trouble um from the start with that so you know i i, I hate seeing um i hate seeing news like that and that leads me on to my next thing because normally when i do see news like that i post about it on my facebook and on twitter and that sort of thing and over the past week or so a lot of people have noticed this but i have been really quiet on social media i've kind of needed to take a bit of a break from social media if i'm honest with you um it's just basically you know social media is a great thing it's a great way of connecting people if it's used right and i kind of think that a lot of a lot of people who use social media these days are not using it as it was initially designed for you know i mean if you look at the original facebook compared to what facebook can actually do these days you'll notice there is a huge difference um because social media itself has developed and i, I can't say that i'm a huge fan of what it's developed into if i'm honest with you you know there's certain features that i like and whatever but it it, it is leading to trouble kind of so yeah so there we go uh so yeah i i have been kind of quiet on social media recently and um and yeah i i i'm not really vowing to go back into social media but um i will probably be posting a little bit more um there we go the other thing that has been in the news recently while we're talking about kind of news stories is that um there is all these accusations of like these um people who have done stuff to kids like sexually abused them and that sort of stuff you know this whole thing has been blown out of proportion and you know where this starts from it starts from the jimmy savile case and i remember my friends turning around to me at the beginning of the jimmy savile case and they went right okay so he's done this uh right why is that not the end of the case and i'm just like listen there is a lot more to this case D trust me it th this is just this is just not gonna this is not gonna go well this is gonna be huge and uh well look at it now i mean th there was a joke made the other day about the uh, titles for coronation street 
which hopefully we shall be starting again quite soon. But there was a, a joke made about it for the credits at the end of the show, and someone said, oh, I thought they were... Um, showing off the uh, paedophile register but it just turns out it was the credits for Coronation Street and that's because within like within like what the past two years or something like that there's been three of the Coronation Street cast accused of this you know of doing stuff to kids like sexually abusing them or whatever this case is it's unbelievable because it's getting to the point now where it's like Rolf Harris has been brought in for questioning. I mean, Rolf fucking Harris. I mean, if I if I could name someone who was I was a hundred percent behind going, he's innocent. It's Rolf Harris. Like I I have no doubt in the back of my mind he's the most innocent man that could ever walk across this earth. I I honestly I have no doubt in my mind. And. You know, again, with with even with some of the cast of Coronation Street, I I think that they are innocent. This whole thing has been blown out of proportion, and there are, there are certain changes that I would like to see brought in. Someone said in the news uh, yesterday or something like that that they think that the age limit for sex in the UK should be lowered down to 13. It currently stands at 16, and this person wants to see it brought down to 13. Now, 13 is um. 13 is the age of consent for Spain. Now, Spain hasn't got a massive problem. Um, but the person excused this and they said we should bring it down to 13 because a lot of these claims for paedophilia and um, indecent assault and that sort of thing, they would basically go away because it would be legal. And it's like, well, no, it wouldn't because you've got to take it for the law as it stood at that time. So, you know, if, if you're going to have sex with someone in the UK who's under the age of 16, you get found out you're going to face the law, and you so should. Even if while you are under uh, the, the, the the trial, then... After, why can't I think of these words? But even if while you're under the trial, even if the law changes, meaning that, you know, your sexual contact would have been legal, well, at the time that you did it, it wasn't. So, no, you should still face it. So, I'm kind of not too bothered if the age of consent does get brought down to 13, but it shouldn't just be... It shouldn't be because you know there are all these claims going on of well he touched me and he did that and whatever and that sort of thing so yeah um but i think this whole case has gone too far you know this jimmy savile case has gone from basically being an investigation of indecent assault or child abuse whatever it is to basically being a witch hunt you know and that that's that's basically what it is you know um so yeah i think it's gone it's gone past the point now of actually being even remotely interesting or something like that um but yeah so that's basically my thought of that um are we any closer to seeing the end of the jimmy savile case sadly no um there are literally allegations made every other week against some other celebrity and the unfortunate thing is these incidents do take a lot of time um a lot of time to investigate and obviously have an outcome you know i mean it was only like what seven or eight months after the first couple of hundred allegations against Jimmy Savile but you know it's only then that the police could actually go okay we've confirmed that at least 200 and odd of them are actually real you know these are genuine incidents and I, I think a lot of these cases have come around because of changes in the law over the years that people haven't noticed and this is something that I pointed out with my mother the other day my mother when she went to school my mother is 50 50 something this year I can't remember how old my mum is is that really bad um should be 50 54 53 I can't remember but anyway when she went to school uh, both in primary and in secondary school it was actually legal for a teacher to hit a child and my mother says that she can still remember it as if she was sat in the room but she remembers seeing a little boy um and the teacher picking him up and literally just shaking the life out of him. Um, and I can't remember what it is she said that he'd done or said or something like that. But he didn't deserve it. And then, she, you know, this teacher literally threw the child on the floor as if, it, you know, he was basically garbage or something like that. And that was legal. But under these new laws, that is classed as child assault. And I think that's where a lot of these cases are actually coming from. I, I'm not saying that these are <coughs> recent cases, but I think that this is this is going back into history and that sort of thing. It's trying to... And, uh, you know, uh, another thing with this, a lot of people have been saying, well, what is going to be the outcome of this? You know, are these people just out for money? Or you, you, what is it that these people want? And I can honestly say, I don't think money actually comes into it i think especially with the jimmy savile case you know when jimmy savile died a lot of people respected him because 
and let's still not forget it, Jimmy Savile donated a lot of money to charity, a lot of time to charity. And it's only afterwards that these people felt confident enough to actually come forward and talk about what he was actually like. You know, it's a long and complicated thing. You know, the man was basically an evil genius basically um with some of the things that he was able to do you know he had the press basically twisted around his little finger he was a very clever man like that but to have your abuser almost idolized after his death when he's done something like that to you that must be hell on earth so i can fully see why these people would wait until he's dead to then come forward and you know they're not going to face any or major repercussions themselves, um, provided it's a genuine case or whatever. On that, though, I do think that there are going to be some cases that we will find out are fake cases. And this is where I said I think the changes should be made. You know, I think that if you're... The, the way that things are happening at the moment, basically, we saw uh, Bill Roach, who plays... Um, who plays Ken Barlow on, Cor on Coronation Street. Now, as literally, as soon as he got accused of that, as soon as the police confirmed it, his name was dragged through the mud in the press. He's not been found guilty of anything. The police are literally just looking into it. He's not been accused of it. But yet, Twitter and Facebook and everything, they were ignited with his name. But if he's found innocent, there are still marks against his name because people are going, well, has he actually done anything? And, you know, it gets people talking about that sort of stuff. So I kind of think that if if, if this is brought forward, <clears throat> the way that it goes is obviously Bill Roach, yes, his name, if, if he's found guilty, then yes, his name would be dragged through the mud. And this innocent person is protected by... I can, I can never say this word, aminuity or whatever it is, anonymity, whatever it is. But they, you, ca you basically can't name them on social media if you know who it is. Um, and they get that for life. But I think it should be reversed. If it's found, say, say with the Bill Roach thing, if he's found not guilty of this, I think it sh the person who's made the accusation should actually be named and shamed because they are probably just doing it for money. And that's, that's completely my honest opinion on that. But, you know, we'll, we'll just see what happens with that. So, there we go. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so, I mean, like I said, the, this is the, the whole allegations and the Jimmy Savile case, it's a long and complicated process, and I have loads of thoughts and ideas about it, but I seriously don't have enough time to actually be talking about it in this um, kind of blog. Because you might have noticed, we are coming to the end of the video. There is light at the end of the tunnel, people. If you are still listening to this, put a comment in the in the uh, video description bit below. Not in the video description, but in the comment section below. Leave a little comment and let me know that you have actually been listening this far. Just do it now. Just type it and go like, yes, I was listening this far. Um, okay, so what what is the future for this podcast? Like I said before, I don't know if I'm going to be doing this weekly or if I'm going to do it monthly or even if I'm going to do it again. It's just purely going to see... Or we're just purely going to see what happens. So there we go. Um, but like I said earlier on as well, the, my contact details are left for you below in the video description bit. So please do get in touch and ask away some questions. And um, like I said, these can be really, really random questions. And I will do my best to try and answer them. And you can make them as personal as you like about me. Honestly, and this is something that people never even understand about me much, really, is that I am the hardest person to offend as well. So don't be, you know, offended if you're thinking, oh, I really want to ask this, but I shouldn't do. Just ask it, please. If I, if I, if, like, if I get offended by it, I'm just going to tell you where to go. So there we go. But like I said, I am I am ridiculously hard to def uh, offend. So there we go. <coughs> and then, of course, to finish off, I will hopefully be getting a camera quite soon. And um, the Life with Bev blog, like videos, will actually be back to kind of normal as you would expect them. Um, so hopefully that will be happening quite soon. I just don't know when. Um, but there you go. I mean, I, I have got quite a few plans coming up for in the summer. <coughs> like, hopefully there is going to be a day at a theme park in the not too distant future which i am really looking forward to um provided it all goes to plan um and so yeah that as well as other things will be happening in my future sorry i i'm i am getting a little bit distracted at the moment because <coughs> it's like you know just coming up to coronation street time it's been cloudy all day there's been spots of rain and it's been Pardon me, it's been windy and everything like that, and then, um, and then yeah, the sun's come out, and there's a load of really dark but low lying cloud, and it just looks like something's on fire not that far away. So, 
I am nosy for my gossip like that, people. But uh, that is where that is where we end for this one. So thank you very much for listening to the first po- uh, podcast. Please let me know what you think about it. And um, I will speak to you guys all quite soon, I hope. Bye! <laughs>